I managed to install Android on the Rabbit R1. And honestly, it wasn't that difficult. Let's talk about it, see how it runs, and I'll show you how I freed the rabbit. As many of you know, the Rabbit R1 has received less than stellar reviews. But if you've been living under a rock and need clarification on what this bright orange box is, let me explain. The company called Rabbit basically calls it the simplest computer that's supposed to be a companion. It's powered by an AI model that they created called Large Action Model, or LAM, and this model is supposedly so powerful that it can even learn how to use any software regardless of the platform it runs on. It sounded great and a lot of people were excited, but it just ended up being a disaster once it reached people's hands. For starters, it can't make phone calls or send text messages, even though it does support a SIM card tray. It can't do basic assistant tasks like setting a timer or sending emails. And it only integrates with a few apps. The crazy part is that it sometimes can't even do what it's intended for. Like if you ask it a question, there are occasions where it'll leave you hanging. What is the weather? Bruh. What is the weather? And other times when it does respond, it sometimes takes its sweet time and sometimes doesn't even find the right answers. It also has a camera feature where it can identify anything in front of you, but it doesn't always work right either. What is this? Let me see. This appears to be a waffle maker or a waffle iron. What is this? Taking a look now. This appears to be a sponge being held in someone's hand over a kitchen sink. It's just a chip. But the biggest drawback is that it has some pretty big security flaws. As pointed out by many engineers, experts, and even some popular YouTubers like CoffeeZilla. So the Rabbit R1 isn't replacing your smartphone anytime soon. But damn it, I already spent $200 on this orange thing and I had to get my money's worth. So I tried to figure out a way to make it even better. Last month I saw that Michelle Rahman from Android Authority revealed that the R1 runs Android under the hood and its entire interface is just powered by an Android app. He even went as far as to show that the Rabbit Launcher could be installed onto an Android phone. Then, a few weeks later, a Twitter user by the name of Marcel D505 made a video showing how he managed to flash a custom Android ROM known as Lineage OS onto the Rabbit R1. And that pretty much inspired me to go set out and try to do the same thing and try to turn this thing into an Android phone. After a lot of research and playing around, I've managed to do it and install a full-fledged Android operating system onto the Rabbit R1. The installation process was pretty straightforward and I'll show you how I did it later on in the video, but first, let me show you how it runs. And by the way, if you like this new style of video, a quick thumbs up would show me to keep making this type of content. Thanks guys. First off, it's running Android 13 and with it, the touchscreen can now be used throughout the entire OS. Before, the touchscreen would only work within the terminal and you would need to use that god-awful scroll wheel to navigate on any other screen. But now, the touchscreen is available to use on any screen, which is super nice. As for the wheel, it's now been turned into a volume slider, so you can actually control the volume levels without needing to jump into the settings. You can even take screenshots by simultaneously long pressing the lock key and swiping down on the scroll wheel. The lock button still works the same way, letting you lock the device, and you can double press it to bring up the camera. The camera also still works. You can even save the pictures you take and even record videos with it. There's even a quick setting tile to let you switch the camera around between privacy so that it's not facing in any direction front or rear. And of course, the speakers still work as the MOAS or the mother of all short squeezes. And the microphone does too. As for the software, it works just like any other Android device. When you turn on the screen, you'll be greeted by your lock screen with all of your notifications. It even supports a passcode now. Then once you unlock it, you're greeted by an actual home screen from an Android launcher 
No longer will you get a basic black and white screen with a rabbit on it. Instead, you'll get colors, icons, widgets, fun animations, and just basically life. I even went as far as to swap it with an even better third-party launcher like LaunchAir 14, and it had no problem running it. As a matter of fact, this may be the first Rabbit R1 to use LaunchAir 14, which is pretty crazy to think about. And of course, I had to add my own widgets that our team created and even use our wallpaper, which looks incredible, even on this 2.8 inch screen. So you can go grab them on our Patreon link down below. Outside of the launcher, I can swipe down to bring up my notifications and the quick settings panel as well. I can also control the brightness and of course, toggle any setting I'd like by tapping on the tiles. From there, I can also access the system settings and modify the OS however I want to. If I have a SIM card inserted, I can even start texting people over SMS and RCS. That one really blew my mind. I just wasn't able to get phone calls to work, but I know it's possible since Marcel over on Twitter showed that he got it working on his end uh, when he flashed Lineage OS on the Rabbit R1. It also supports and runs almost every Google app and service out there, so I can literally use Google Maps to navigate with it, watch YouTube videos, and even full screen them, send and manage emails within the Gmail app, create and manage calendar events, use the calculator app, use Google Lens, browse the web with Google Chrome, use Gboard instead of the one that Rabbit was using, manage my files with the Files app, and even use Google Gemini to obtain a way better AI assistant than the default one found on Rabbit OS. I can even say the hot word out loud and it'll still bring up the assistant. It really does it all. The best part is that it also supports the Play Store, so I can literally download and use almost any app on this device. This includes Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Spotify, DoorDash, Uber, and even some games like Temple Run, Clash of Clans, and more. It really works just like any other Android. Plus, since it comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, I can probably download over 100 apps on this thing. And for the most part, all the apps I use so far work without a problem. Sure, it's not the smoothest or quickest device out there too, but the MediaTek processor and four gigabytes of RAM found inside this thing actually provide a decent experience. I'd say the only awful thing is the battery life. It drains so much faster now, but that's to be expected with it running a full-fledged Android OS. Now let's talk about how I actually installed Android on the Rabbit R1. Just a quick disclaimer though, I didn't create this process. It's actually on GitHub and I just followed the instructions on there to get it working. So if you do decide to try this on your Rabbit R1, do so at your own risk. I take no responsibility for any damage this process might cause to your Rabbit R1, especially since, once again, I didn't create this project. On GitHub, it's called R1 Escape and it provides all the necessary tools and scripts needed to flash Android onto the R1. The project also offers detailed instructions on how to get it done. It's pretty straightforward. It basically just involves running a script on your Windows PC to get it to flash. And according to the project, you can also use Linux. To start off, I just downloaded the project as a zip file by clicking the green code button on the GitHub page. And I also downloaded the system image file. I then extracted both files and then placed the system image within the R1 escape folder. From there, I just followed the instructions on the GitHub page, which included running a command within PowerShell to set the execution policy to unrestricted. This is a pretty serious restriction, by the way, so make sure to revert it back afterward to improve your security. Here's the code on the screen. I then opened a terminal from within the R1 escape folder, and then I ran the following command, dot backslash r1.ps1. After hitting enter, the script ran and guided me through the process, which basically just involved turning off the device and plugging it into the computer multiple times. It then automatically unlocked the bootloader, installed a fresh new copy of Android 13 designed specifically for the R1, and booted up into the Android setup process. That's it. Thumbs up for freeing the rabbits. Anyway, check out this video right here to learn about some unique apps that can enhance your Android experience. If you enjoyed this video and want me to make more content just like this, give it a thumbs up and I'll create more. Make sure to subscribe with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on our weekly videos. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!